So what we're going to do today is talk about how the Department of Tourism reaches its visitors and how we can help you promote your canal, your destination. Now, I had the privilege to visit the Nine West Plain, Nine Plain West Incline in Warren County a few years ago. I was fascinated by it. I was up in Warren County for the Warren County Farmers Fair, and it was insisted at the time that the then Secretary of State and I take a tour of the Incline Plain. We thought, oh, okay, fine. We spent like two hours. There was a wonderful museum uh, that we toured, and then we actually went down into the uh, incline. I couldn't believe we were ducking down so low. I thought we were going to gravel for the dirt. But, and it was cold, it was August, and it was absolutely freezing underground. And what I did was I thought about the men, the laborers, from more than a century ago that went underground and built these facilities in order to bring in, to your doors uh, industry and be fruitful and grow. And that's what we're all about in New Jersey. We're never ending. Tourism in New Jersey is big business. Last week we attended the annual tourism conference in Atlantic City. And at that time, the research numbers were unveiled that tourism in New Jersey, despite the perils of last year, increased 1.3%. We're proud of that. And visitor spending in New Jersey surpassed $40 billion. In New Jersey, tourism generated $9.9 .9 billion in government revenue. That's state, local, and federal taxes. And the tourism industry in New Jersey supports 320,000 320, jobs, direct jobs. And that means that for, and I'm sorry, more than 511,000 jobs, direct and indirect. One in 10 New Jersey employees are employed in the hospitality and tourism industry. This report is online, and it's about uh, 63 pages long, and you can access it by going to the visitnj.org website, where you can download this report, and it is very specific uh, how the monies uh, coming in were spent, lodging, food and beverage, retail, and transportation. It, it gives you information by county, what were the county numbers? How did the counties do in tourism last year and visitor spending? Morris County ranked the highest increase with 6.9%. And it's important information for you to have as you develop uh, and look at what you are doing in your counties and in your backyard. The other report that we have online that I wanted to mention is a visitor profile report. And that is also known as the DK Shiflet Report. And this report will give you the demographics. Who is coming to New Jersey? Where are they coming from? When they get here, what are they doing? What activities are they participating in? And so it's important for you to see where outdoor recreation, historic visits to historic sites play in the overall tourism economy for New Jersey. And I would be remiss if I did not mention the Tourism Economics Report of the Economic and Fiscal Impact of Heritage Tourism in our state. Uh, Dorothy, we're here. Dorothy Guzzo um, from the New Jersey, there she is, from the New Jersey Historic Trust. Uh, this report was done uh, by the Trust, and it is online at their website. And it's very specific to your industry. Next slide. So, what do we do in our department that we can help you with? The first thing you need to know is that you can get listed on the state tourism website. If you go on visitnj.org, down in the lower left-hand corner, there's an icon for you to click on, how to get listed. Now, we have a very small budget in the state of New Jersey. Our tourism budget is $9 million. Not a lot of money compared to our competitive set and other states. But that's what it is. That's a reality. 
Our resources are few, and funding is, uh, you know, what it is. So let's use what we have to promote you. If you are listed, if your destination, your attraction is listed on the state tourism website, you are then listed in the official travel guide for the state of New Jersey. We print 400,000 copies of that travel guide that is located in all the welcome centers, all the travel plazas, in hotels. We send fulfillment out to conventions, uh, to people that write in at visitmj.org, and they call the 1-800 number. You go on, you sign up to get listed with an ID and a login. Once you're given that password, you control the web page on the state tourism website. As I said, we are spending money to promote New Jersey through visitnj.org, and we want to make sure you are listed, not just on our website, but in our travel guide. Once you're listed, you can upload photos, 360-degree uh, video. You can uh, list your amenities, list tours. You can add to that web page, and I'm here to encourage you to make sure that you're listed. And I don't think too many people are, because this morning I went to our official travel guide to look to see uh, if there were listings, and I didn't find too many. So make sure you do that. The other thing that we do is that you can do is add your events to the state tourism website. At visitnj.org, there is a link, add your event. And the same thing, you go in, you sign up for an ID and a password, and then you can list your event. And once the, so if you're having a festival and you want, or you're having an activity at your incline plane along at a canal, what you want to do is put that into the state tourism and your events. We also print a calendar of events for the state that is widely distributed. Consider applying for a cooperative marketing grant. Can we have the next slide, please? Thank you. The Division of Travel and Tourism administers two grant programs. The first one is the Cooperative Marketing Grant Program. That is a collaboration between the Division uh, of Travel and Tourism and New Jersey Tourism Industries. Funding provided, it's funding provided to market specific tourism opportunities with awards ranging from $2,000 to $25,000. Is there anybody in the room that has received a cooperative marketing grant? Not one. Well, there's money sitting there waiting to be taken. And you can apply to have a brochure or a rec card created, designed, and distributed. And you can apply for it between $2,000 and $5,000. It is a cooperative marketing grant. You need to show us that there is 25% money raised for the grant. So if you wanted to apply for $5,000, you'd have to uh, provide us with oh, what $1,250. So now your total grant for developing and distributing a brochure is $6,250. So there you have it, it's that simple. You can apply for a advertising and marketing uh, cooperative grant for an event. If you have an activity, if you're having a festival, any kind of event that you want to advertise, with a banner ad, with a brochure, with a rap card, if you want to buy time on a local radio station, if you want to do a print ad, you can apply for up to $15,000. You can be for profit or not profit. You just cannot be another state agency, and the money that you provide as the grant co-op must not come, again, from state money. Or you can apply for a general marketing plan. If you wanted to do a combination of advertising, marketing, brochure creation, then you can apply for a general marketing grant. Now, if you think you're interested, the deadline to submit a letter of intent to our department is April 16th. 
and once your letter of intent is accepted by our department, you will then have the opportunity to go through the grant process, which is all done on SAGE. Lady and I, before we're talking about SAGE, it's what we use. The grant administrator in our department is Colleen Carr, and anybody that's worked with her knows that she will actually walk you through each step along the way. And if you go to our website, visitnj.org, at the very bottom of the page, there is a link for grant opportunities. That's where you can get the application, the specifics for the letter of intent, and look to see if there is an opportunity for you to take advantage of this grant program. Okay. Did you know that the Department of Travel and Tourism has a literature distribution program? You can distribute your rack card or brochure at any of our state welcome centers free of charge as long as you are a New Jersey attraction and destination. The policy allows for only New Jersey tourists and businesses to place their brochures at official welcome centers. The guidelines, application, and site checkoff form are available online at visitnj.org. At the bottom of the page, there's a link for industry news. Once you're approved, you receive a mail, uh, an email with mailing and shipping instructions. Please don't be intimidated by the application process. The application is one page. The site checkoff form is one page. The guidelines are two pages. You just want professionally produced brochures. What happens is once you're approved and you receive shipping or mailing instructions, or you can drive to one of our welcome centers and uh, drop it off. The travel counselor at our welcome centers will be in touch with you when your brochure needs to be replenished. There's an international association of professional brochure distributors, and they did a survey that cited brochures picked up in the marketplace was their greatest source of information during trip planning. The impact on travel during trip planning is 81%. That means 81% of people have changed their mind as a result of picking up a brochure. What visitors like about brochures, the valuable information that it has, the easy information that it provides, it's tangible, it's a hard copy. While we're all connected to our smartphones, it's amazing that more people stop the Destination Marketing Association International, which is the guru for convention and visitor bureaus, reported two years ago that even though folks had their smartphones, people had increased going into visitor centers and picking up a brochure because they want the tangible item. They may think they know what they want to do, they may know what they're going to do, but once they get to the destination is when they actually decide what they are going to do. The uh, second to last bullet notes that 60% of visitors plan to visit and 54% consider changing their plans as a result. And that uh, research survey is available online at the International Association of Brochure Professional Distributors. So that's there for you as well. The next toolbox I'd like to talk, the next item I'd like to talk about that's available to you is the Destination Marketing Organizations in the state of New Jersey. That is a DMO um, grant. We have 14 funded destination marketing organizations in the state, and we have one in Morris County, Leslie Bensley's here, who's the director of the Morris County Tourism Borough. Anybody here from Sussex? Because I know that's one of your counties. Sussex, the Sussex Skylands, Tammy Forcefield. She'll be with me next week when we go to International Powwow where the department, along with four convention and visitor bureaus in New Jersey, will be uh, meeting one-on-one -on -one with 150 international tour operators from all over the world. These are one-on-one, 15-minute pre-scheduled appointments. But our DMOs partner with us in many ways. They, um, the 14 tourism-related organizations were awarded the grant. It's a two-year grant. 
of $1.5 million in total to expand tourism marketing opportunities in New Jersey. Now folks will come to me and say, how do you promote, you know, I want to be promoted. I want you to be talking about me. Well, when we promote New Jersey, we're looking at the macro image. We're promoting New Jersey from High Point to Cape May, from Ellis Island to the Statue of, I'm sorry, from Ellis Island to the Delaware Water Gap. So we're looking at the big picture. These are the activities that you can do in our state. Biking, hiking, golfing, uh, swimming, antiquing, shopping. Shopping is the number one activity. If you're putting together any kind of website, web page, uh, brochure, make sure you list what's nearby as far as shopping, because that is the number one activity that people do. Um, so, I also want to mention that the DMO serve to promote tourism of, as a destination as their primary function. Not everybody can be a DMO, but that must be the primary function of the DMO. So you have a Chamber of Commerce, which is promoting business uh, to your members, to your destination, wherever you're located, and that Chamber should have a separate entity that's just focused on destination marketing organization. Many of the DMOs in the state of New Jersey started out as a chamber, like the Meadowlands Liberty Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Princeton Regional Convention and Visitors Bureau. They're, most of them are part of another agency. However, Hudson County, that's a county organization, and they are a funded DMO by our department because there is a segment within the county organization that focuses on tourism and cultural heritage tourism. And Bill LaRosa has been very successful in getting grant money. He too will be with us at International Powwow. So the primary function is destination marketing. It can be a single city, a group of municipalities, or a defined region. The DMA works with stakeholders, hotels, restaurants, attractions, and smaller tourism entities. And I want to hone in on this. You all should be working with your business leaders, your legislative elected officials at all levels of government, and your community to educate them about the canal. Because when people come to New Jersey, the number one thing that they do is they're staying with friends and family. They're visiting friends and family. So we want to make sure that our residents know that you are there so they can then take their visiting family and friends to your canal. The DMO must work with area businesses to drive visitation when and where it is most appropriate. I mentioned Hudson County, Warren County, um, they are looking to become a DMO. They did have a tourism organization there a few years ago. It died off and I've talked with some of the folks up there and they're looking uh, to re-energize. In Essex, the Greater Newark Convention and Visitors Bureau. Lauren Hall is the marketing director for Greater Newark. She does an excellent job. You should tap into her so that she knows about your canal and how she can help promote, promote outdoor recreation. And I mentioned Essex. Is there anybody here from say it? We need a tourism organization in Passaic, and I know that they have their board, I think, of chosen freeholders has voted to have a tourism advisory council up there. I'm waiting to be invited. <laughs> All right? <laughs> but that's important. Let's show the map. Here's a map of the destination marketing organizations in New Jersey, and I really want you to work with these partners. I will do whatever I can from you at the state level, but again, I'm looking at the big picture. So not all of these are funded. Most 14 of these are funded in this two-year cycle. But these are the organizations that have a structure in place, they have bylaws, they have a mission, and they are the ones that you need to go to whenever you need help in developing your canal as a destination. So, in closing, what did I say in the beginning? Tourism for me is economic development of natural and cultural resources that creates an asset to bring visitors and residents to your destination. 
and I read something um, where you were thinking of, you know, like you're a national phenomenon. Well, you're international. When I go to, a, when we go to our trade shows and meet with tour operators, and you think about, oh, a tour operator, a bus. I don't want a motor coach coming into my backyard. Well, it's not 50 gray-haired ladies. I am going gray. I can say that, and I'm over 65. So it's different now. A motor coach may have their their motor coaches are being resized, so they're downsizing. They're no longer 55 seat capacity. It could be 40 seat. There could be uh, a group of ladies. It could be a group of 10 seats of students. There could be a family of 10. It's multi-generational. It's multi-sector on a coach. We call them coaches because they're very expensive pieces of equipment. Somebody said earlier, trains, planes, and automobiles, and coaches. A motor coach coming into your backyard for one day deposits up to $5,000 in your local economy. That's transportation costs, that's gasoline, that's for uh, retail, people are shopping, admission costs, uh, touring costs. A motor coach that comes into your uh, destination deposits between $5,000 and $7,500 staying overnight in your destination just one night. And when they stay overnight, that money is a hotel fee, which comes back to the general fund and goes into your funds in your municipalities. And a motor coach that stays two nights can generate up to $11,000 in your local economy. Why not reach the student market? Why not reach the college students that are engineers or high school students that want to study architecture and construction? There's the market for you. Why not reach the international market? Was anybody here at the, uh, the annual tourism conference last week in Atlantic City? Did you hear Peter Greenberg, the keynote speaker? Peter Greenberg, CBS New Travel News. He said, we need to think globally. We know our visitors are coming regionally, but if we ignore the international market, we are cutting off a big slice of visitors. Why not reach the international market? The farmers who want to come here and learn about the equipment that we use. No matter what they're using, ours is better. Why not teach them and show them what we did more than 100 years ago in building an inclined plane and having that canal go from Phillipsburg from Pennsylvania to Jersey City. They're all going to Jersey City anyway because you know they're going to New York. But you know what? They're staying in New Jersey hotels. Last year when I was at International Pow Wow, I met with a Chinese operator. And when I talked with him about coming to New Jersey, you know what he told me? He stays in Parsippany. And he's going to New York, and I couldn't believe it. But it's much easier for him to stay in Parsippany and then move that group early the next morning into New York for its New York City tours. And that's fine. I don't mind sharing the wealth with New York if they're staying in my hotels. And you shouldn't mind sharing the wealth with Sussex and Morris and Warren and Monmouth and Ocean and Atlantic City and Cumberland. Because it's all good for New Jersey. It's good for us. So I leave you with this homework assignment. How will the Morris Canal Greenway, from its natural assets, stimulate a tourism economy with developed and marketable assets. Hopefully I've given you some ideas.